Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. I need a clap. I need a clap. Oh, yeah, yes. We're going. We're going. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Savage Saturdays. I'm your host, Derek White. Joining me, as always, is my friend, Owen. What up? We are, once again, sans Stacy. It's just Owen and I today. We're going to be telling, uh, you know, finally, dude, finally. So this is episode eight. I think I've only been able to drink twice. Yeah. And I, I remember, like, the first podcast we did, I was like, this is weird for me, being sober. Right. Because, like, just talking isn't a sober fucking sport, you know? Right. <laughs> and so uh, it is uh, actually shit. It's fucking Saturday. It is this Saturday. Is, this, is, this, will, this episode will come out next week, but yep. it's Saturday night. You know, um, my the boys are at my ma's house. I'm it's my, free. It's my birthday eve. Fuck. Tomorrow. It is your birthday. Dude, I told yep. you like three weeks ago to remind me that it's your birthday. What do you yeah. what do you got planned for your birthday? Uh nothing. Well, that's that's actually like that's a good we're gonna, like we're gonna stay home. Yeah. Well, like and when it's your birthday, like so what you're gonna be 43? 42. 42. God damn. I need I need or like what what's gonna like Am I going to have to replace you in 10 years because you you're going to retire or something? My like, hips what's won't up? work. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, fucking happy birthday, Owen. Well, thank you. I will drink for you. All right. Owen, Owen doesn't drink much. I don't. Yeah, he got blown up in Afghanistan and gets migraines yeah, and my, shit. Yeah, my war souvenir was wicked bad yeah. fucking migraines if I have yeah. like half a beer. Fuck that. Cut like my the, other leg off. Oh, fuck the that. Amount of Cut fun, my other leg off. Yeah. The amount of fun <laughs> I have to have when I drink to justify the the <sighs> magnitude of headache that I'm going to get is yeah. like, it's not worth it. So yeah, so I don't drink. And like weed, have you experimented with other drugs? Because I'll tell you what, man, I don't drink as much as people think right. I drink, right. but like I definitely... After like eight or nine days, I'll catch myself be like, why am I so miserable? It's like, oh shit. Oh. I've been I've been sober for a I've long let time. Go. Yeah, I think I think escaping reality yeah. is a fucking critical component to staying happy. Yeah. And I like maybe that's something an abuser or a user says, but I fucking <laughs> <laughs> I need it. Yeah. It's my medicine. Like how do people paint without drinking? How do people play music without drinking? I don't, I don't think know. they do. But anyways, it feels good. It feels good to be able to just kick back, have a sixer, record a podcast. Uh, you need to do our timer. You need to start our timer. My it's phone's going. going. Okay. Just let me know when we're at an hour or so. Yep. Um, you, you know, like we're, we're still new to the podcast game. We have to make we're sure still figuring it we out. go long enough or something. <laughs> so anyways, I have been failing our listeners. You've been, I've been failing our listeners. I know like you one started of the things, something and one of the, like for Savage Saturdays, one of the things I wanted to be consistent with was the Savage Slapper of the week, a song, a song. Cause right? this is, this is a fitness show. Mostly right. we talk a lot of shit. Like I talk about my dick a lot for a fitness podcast. Right. I need to stop. I never will. No, like, like, <laughs> I mean, dick jokes are funny. I can't help it, you know, but um, the Savage Slapper of the Week was an idea I had to share a song that I enjoy listening to while I lift so that you guys can, you know, everybody, everybody likes good new gym music. And I'll tell you what, I got a Savage Slapper of the Week for you today. What is it? Asking Alexandria, man. Oh. They got a new album coming out May yep. 15th. I think it's called like like A House on Fire. I'm sorry, guys. I fucking, I think it's called like A House on Fire. The song is called know. They Don't Want What We Want and They Don't Care. Right. They, I think it was like originally going to be called Panic. I have a little insider info because like I have the privilege of calling those guys friends. Like right. we had Danny here. Yeah, in he our, did a, he in did our a, house he did doing a cooking, a cooking video. Yeah, we, did a, we, we got guy. to do a cooking video with uh, Danny from Asking Alexandria. That and was, if, if you saw the video, you know they lit the fucking kitchen on fire yeah, as soon as they were there. Yeah, ready. and remember, like, and that took you, like, hours to edit, and then yeah. I asked you to change it, <laughs> and I was almost like, no, I want you to change it. No, you really. Know? Like, <laughs> yeah. totally fucking yeah. redo it. We fucking crushed that, too, yeah. because, like, we made uh, scotch eggs, right? and we'd never done it before, right. and we made fucking perfect, beautiful Which, scotch from, eggs. Which, from the way Danny explained it, is, like, a very complicated pork person food right and you, i think yeah you guys so, did it yeah like, you didn't fuck them up yeah you know what's great poor person food what the irish did it right shepherd's pie oh it's my favorite fucking shepherd's pie so my we just favorite. got the boys uh like uh shameless plug here if you're local to las vegas uh we get foodie fit meals like you know so like meal, it's a meal prep company and it's really good and we gave the boys shepherd's pie for the first time the other day. Did they and love they it? They fucking loved it, dude. Of course they, they dude, did. They just, they fucking devour meat. Yeah. All right. So anyways. All my kids do. Anyways. 
Um, we do have a topic for today and you know me, like I'll just fucking talk shit for an hour. The topic I, I, I wanted for some reason, I wanted to kind of like tell my story. It's almost like an 11 year story of, of, of like sort of my business life, but why, like how I became this internet fitness, how, how this became my job, how this right. became my business, because it's a weird fucking, there was a lot of twists and turns and weird things. And, and, um, <laughs> I'm just going to share my story and I don't have like, I'm sure there's lessons learned that can be pulled out of it and things like that. Or people can relate because they're in a similar position and stuff right. like that. Trying to start and something up. And yeah. You know, get it going. this was all just fucking react, 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 react for the most part. You know, the last couple of years have been yeah. pretty uh, calculated. Uh, I got a lot of burps. And uh, I'm just going to get progressively drunker and drunker <laughs> and tell my story. Dude, like, I feel, I feel great. I feel good. I like, it's a nice break. I'm recording a podcast. I'm, I got, I got, I got me some beers. I haven't eaten yet today. So they're going to go down fast. Nice. And right before this, I worked out. I got pre-workout in me. I'm yep. feeling good. You're like in the zone. Let's tell a story. Do it. Tell us something, Derek. You, it, you got, it, it has to start. So this is the story of, 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 of sort of my business life over the last 11 years. And it has to start, like I got kicked out of the army, not kicked out. I say that that's a mean way to say it, but I got medically retired from the army. Right. All right. First thing, you know, like I think anything anybody ever needs to know and understand about me is that was my life plan. You know, like my life plan was to stay in the army for a 20, career. 20 yeah. Years. You know, yeah. like that's, I fucking loved it. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. But you know, like fucking, I walked in a door and I got shot and that, sh that went to shit. That changed. You know, and I, <laughs> yeah. Very fast. And, and I struggled for, I, I struggled hard for two years with no new purpose, no new purpose at all. That's a hard reset for anybody. Mm hmm. It is. I struggled with it when I got medically retired. And I, I don't care who you are or yeah. what you did or under what circumstances you left the military, you're going to hit that. Yep. It doesn't matter. So like I got fucking shot and medically retired. Stacy did a fucking nine year stint and got out and you know, it's the same fucking yeah. thing. It's the, it's the culture shock. I'll say it's the plight of the veteran it's not a plight, but it's a way that people can understand it. Like no matter who you are or what you did, if you leave the military, you're going to. Everyone's going to leave the military for the most part, for the most part. Obviously some people have things to go back to and th or let's just say it's common. It's common. Okay. But so like under, uh, especially under my circumstances, um, you know, I made some mistakes back then for like two years. I lived under the uh, pretense that because my life in the military was over, that my life was over. I was just drinking mm -hmm. and I was, I just wanted to fucking die. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll skip past that. And, uh, uh at, at some point I started going to school. I started going to school. Like I, 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 I found a little hope. I found a little light Yep. and we'll talk. It's maybe like 2009, 2010 ish. I started going to school Okay. and, uh, I was going to school for psych. I was like, what do I want to do? I was like, well, I'm a fucking broke body. I can't do gunslinger shit anymore. Right. But my brain still works. Mm -hmm. And I had this idea that I would like to be an interrogator, you know, like a civilian interrogator. And I'd get to go with, you know, I try to be really good. And I'd get to go hang out with the cool guys and do cool guy shit as an interrogator. You I, know? My face cringed when you said the word for, if you're not watching it on YouTube, like you said, interrogator, that just sounds like a horrible job to me. No, nah, dude, I fuck you No, know, it's super. So like in, in interrogating, like high value targets, right. like fucking top level terrorists and things like that. That was my new goal, you okay. know? Yep. And so I went, I was going to school for, I was studying psychology and criminal justice. And I was, I was, I was doing, I, I, I did so bad in high school. I barely graduated high school, but, uh, you know, like in college, I carried like a 3.9 GPA. I did very well in college. I started late, but I was like, college was a means to an end for me. You know, like I knew what I wanted to do going into it. Right. And so I was studying psychology and criminal justice. And on top of that, like, you know, I have a lot of books about, you know, there's, there's some cool books in here about, um, interrogation. And there's actually some cool ones written by civilian interrogators and things like that. That was my way back in. Yep. I, I hadn't given up on the main dream. Oh, you were the, trying to backdoor your yeah, way yeah, back into yeah. the military somehow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. So, that makes sense. Uh, so I was, I was, I was doing that and I was, I was, you know, I went to, I started going to school in Minnesota and I ended up moving to Denver after I got my leg cut off, um, to be closer to my friend, Sean Ensley, who was a big, um, uh, he, he was keeping me afloat. 
You know, okay. we, we've talked about him a yep. little bit before and we started the nonprofit together and things like that. Anyways, I moved to Denver and I was going to Metropolitan State University in downtown Denver. And those were good times. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, dude, like going to school for like psychology, it's cool, but also fucking annoying. Like the classes are cool. The, the subject is cool. The content is cool. But it's a liberal arts yep. major, and you have to be around those motherfuckers, all right? And right. those motherfuckers are not cool. Nope. They're not cool. Um, <laughs> Especially not having just gotten out of an infantry unit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wrote, I wrote a lot of interesting papers that were sort of like not what the professors wanted. Mm-hmm. I couldn't guys. deny the truth. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so anyways, the, the point is, is like, so I'm in, I'm in Denver. It's 2013. I'm in Denver going to school for, I'm studying psychology and criminal justice um, because I want to be an interrogator, a civilian interrogator with the military. And I'm talking like, you know, when I was in the army, I always say like not talking shit. Don't know if I would have made it or not, would it, but I would, my, my, my dream, my goal was to go the special forces route. Right. All right. And so I wanted to be like a, I was dedicated, man. I was dedicated to learning the craft of lying and deception and, 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 and pulling that shit out. It, dude, it was, it was a cool thing to study. It makes you dangerous. Right. Cause it makes you a, like a, you it makes you a great manipulator. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's something, you know, so <laughs> I, I always have to be careful of myself sometimes, but anyways, you know, so I, I was dedicated. And, and so a uh, plot twist to all this is while I was living in Denver, I got engaged. So before Stacy, I've been married. Okay. Like, and when I got engaged and this is no, I'm not trying to say anything bad or anything like that, but you know, when I got engaged, um, this is a real thing. It's life, you know, like, uh, the, 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 the girl that ended up becoming my first wife, she just had a lot of debt and things like that. Like we had money like, and I was fucking broke as shit too. I was living right. in a fucking studio apartment. So now and, you have debt. Yeah. So like I was living in a, in Denver, I had this studio apartment. It was a couple hundred square foot. It was 500 bucks a month. It was awesome. Right. It was in the basement of a building that had gargoyles on top and shit. Sounds amazing. But anyways. Yeah, it was cool. It certainly wasn't big enough for two people. Uh-huh. And I said, I said, okay, you like, we have money issues. You need to go back home to Minnesota, live with your mom, work, pay off some of these fucking debts. Okay. That was our plan. And I was like, I'll finish this semester of school and I'll meet you up there when I'm done with this semester in and Minnesota. So and so, yeah. And okay. so that's what happened. That's why I moved. Like I really enjoyed living in Denver, but that's why I moved from Denver back to Minnesota. That's okay. why I've, I've, I've said that I've said a lot that I moved for a girl. Minnesota. Yeah. So, you know, but when you have fucking money things and things like that, you know, yeah. um, sometimes living at home and paying off fucking bills, dude. And like, we are lucky to have parents like that. Right? Those of us who do. Yeah. And I'm, I'm fortunate to have always had parents like that, that have supported me in tough times. I think I do that for my kids when they're Absolutely. up like, Hey, so, you know, you need to so reset, come back. That's the understanding. It's like, you know, they, I, I just, you know, you know, even like late in my adult life, up till I was about 30, my mom would bail me out quite often. Um, I was just, oh, dude, I was, I grew up, I, I was broke. Right. My whole twenties, I was fucking broke. And I'll tell that a lot through this story, you know, and, but I, I've always had a mom and a dad who were there for me. And like, dude, I've never been unappreciative of that. And I never forget how grateful I am because right. not everybody has that. And and all I can do to pay them back is to do that for my kids too. Mm-hmm. Keep the cycle going. Okay. That's the, that's, that'll be payback enough for them. So they'll understand that. But anyway, so I moved back to Minnesota and I got accepted to the U of M um, to finish my degree. Cause at this point I only had like a semester left in my bachelor's degree. And here's where I pulled a Derek. I like a semester away from a four year degree and I was just like, I don't want to fucking go to school anymore. I don't want to go to school. Like I, and, and here's why I was, I was hanging out at the gym and, um, one of the guys at the gym, it was my friend. It's funny. He was 72 <laughs> years old. One but, of the guys at the gym said, but he was, he, no. So he was, so <laughs> this guy was fucking 72 years old and he was my friend. Right. And I'm fucking 25, 26 or something like that, you know? And, uh, he was, but he was actually the director of national security for Minnesota. Okay. And I was telling him, he was like, he was like, what do you, you know, what are you, what are you trying to do? And I told him, I was like, Hey man, I want to get like a government job. I want to be an interrogator. I want to be attached to these people and things like that. And I was, I told him I was worried because of the criminal record that I had racked up. Right. When I got kicked out of the 
when I got medically retired from the army for two years, I got like, I got two DUIs. I had several misdemeanors. I had several assault charges. I had a deferred felony assault charge. God you damn, know? dude. So, yeah. And you're and, staying busy. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> I, I made a lot of poor choices and I'm not, I'm not like, there were other choices available to me at the time. I couldn't see it. I lived like shit, dude. I'm yeah, not proud it, of it. it I'm, not, I'm not proud of it, but I don't beat myself up about it. Right. Okay. So here I'm you like, are at a point where yeah. you're like trying mm-hmm. to make, make better. Yeah. And what's the guy, what's he say? He said, you'll never get a fucking government job with that kind of record this, this soon, you know? And I yeah. was like, fuck. Like, so there goes, you know, like I had, I had this dream, dream got taken away. I had, I was like, all right, plan B. Let's try to do this. And this was keeping me afloat, you know? Right. And, and he basically, he was, and I he think he told me that, and I think that's a reality, a couple DUIs and those charges they're, you know, well, they kick you out of the army if you have a DUI yeah. or they did for, mm-hmm. I don't know if they yeah. do right now, but so, yeah. So he's like your chances, or at least your chances of getting a job like that right. are very poor. And I was like, all right, like, thanks for the tough love. I guess I have to, yeah. You know, was, right. so I, 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 I believed him. I trusted him. And I said, okay, I think I have to find something new. And so this is late 2013. I'm talking late, like November, December or something like that. And I just, I, so I decided, I decided not to go back to school. You know, I got, I was accepted to the U of M. I was going to finish my degree, but I was like, what's the fucking point? If yep. I can't get this fucking job, yep. why would I fucking go finish this degree? All right. Stupid Derek decisions. Smart thing to do would be to finish that degree. Man. But, but, I, but here, here was my thing. Um, in, in college, you know, I started, I started college when I was 24, 25 years old. And especially in psychology, what you do is talk about life. Mm-hmm. And I, and I said, to, I remember saying it to myself, I was like, I'm tired of talking about life. I want to go live my life. I've been talking about life for three fucking years. Okay. If I have to hear the fucking name Kitty Genovese one more goddamn fucking time, I'm going to lose my fucking shit. Okay. And half the shit they teach in psychology is bullshit. Okay. Like one of the last papers I wrote was science is the new Jesus. Cause sometimes in those social sciences class, like research college research is there's a lot of research that people have to do. And so some of the research is just bullshit. And I saw through the bullshit. <laughs> anyways, anyways. So, you know, so there I was. It was like maybe like November, December 2013. And I just, I had no plan anymore. I had no plan. And so I asked myself, I was like, all right, well, what do I enjoy? What do I enjoy? I was like, well, I've always enjoyed fitness. I've always enjoyed working out. I fucking, I love it. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay. So actually at the time, uh, my, my, my then wife who was not Stacy again, this is still my first wife. Um, she worked at lifetime fitness okay. in white bear Lake, Minnesota there. So she worked at lifetime lifetime a is bougie a bougie place. Dude, like, but life is so lifetime is based out of Minnesota. Okay. And their headquarters is up there. I had a membership uh, to them here. Yeah. Dude. Oh, the, the one in Summerlin. Yeah. Oh, the no. one in Henderson. Oh, no shit. The pool dude. And yeah, the bar so my, and everything. yeah, I know. So lifetime is super. So in my first, I got a free lifetime membership worth it. I lost that in the divorce. God damn it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. You should have fought harder yeah. for that, dude. <laughs> I don't even know if she works for them anymore. I don't know. But anyways, I was like, well, I like, I like fitness. I don't just like fitness. I love fitness. Fitness has been a fucking, uh, uh, fitness has been my life since I was 17. We kind of told that story right. in episode one. And I was like, all right, well, I'll be a personal trainer. You know, seems like the fucking reasonable move, you right. know, cause like I don't have money. And at dude, like when I got medically retired, I'm t- I was at like seventy percent, and so I'm maybe getting like eight or which nine. Which is crazy to me that like you get out yeah. with missing a leg, or you didn't get out missing the leg. Yeah. So you at this your, time, like, I was missing my leg. Okay. And okay, so maybe I was at like eighty percent or so. Okay. But we're talking like fourteen, yeah, no, fourteen hundred bucks. Still fourteen hundred bucks a month. That's what I was living on. And yep. my wife worked. My wife at the time worked intermittently minimum wage jobs. So we were, you know, making ends meet and yep. that's it. That's it. And I was like, well, fucking, we got to do something. Cause we're like month to month, you know? Um, so, you know, I was like, what am I going to fucking do with my life? I was like, well, I'll be a personal trainer. So I've fucking been, it's the lifetime fitness in white bear Lake, Minnesota that my w- wife works at. And I got friends who fucking run the whole goddamn place. Right. And I ask for a fucking job. Yeah. That's actually how I met my first wife. 
Asking for a job. Asking for a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because she thought it was a clever ploy. She thought it was a clever <laughs> ploy for me to talk to her. Right. But I was actually just wanting a job. No, actually I'm broke <laughs> and yeah. I need a job. But anyway, so I was, you know, I was talking to like the head trainers there and stuff like that. And I was like, I'd like to be a personal trainer. And, uh, you know, they told me cause I was, you know, I had tattoos and facial hair and things like that. Do you have face tattoos yet? No, fuck. No. Okay. No, I didn't. Yeah, no, I sealed the deal. I sealed my fate with that the fucking face tattoos. Yeah. But I didn't like, you know, so I, I, I wanted to be a trainer and they told me how to wear long sleeves and shave my face and match their mold. And I was like, mm. that's just not something I do in the military. I do that shit. I, yep. Okay. Like the military can tell me what to do, but on this side of the fucking fence, don't fucking tell me. I just don't like being controlled like that. I right. don't, I don't, I don't. I never have. And, you know, but the military was, I didn't give a shit about it in the military. Well, you go in with the expectation that that's the mm-hmm. way it is. Mm-hmm. And there is no other military yeah. you can go be in. And especially after getting shot, like, motherfucker, I earned my freedom. Don't right. tell me how to fucking look. I'm a grown All my right? fucking Because, you know, beard. every gym. And so, dude, like, I still, to this day, I couldn't get a job at a gym. I couldn't. Like, a gym like that, like LVAC, they they would they wouldn't hire me as a trainer. Oh, my God. We should and, try and they got one like day. Fat, I have. I've talked to the motherfuckers. I would, yeah, love, but, I would love to train in person just for fun. I would love to like, film that. Yeah, but, like, they Derek Wyatt tries to get a job at Lifetime they Fitness. They won't hire me, but they'll fucking... They have... <laughs> there's fat people who are trainers. There's skinny fucking weak people who are trainers. Fucking nerds who are fucking trainers. <laughs> Bitch-ass pussy motherfuckers can be trainers, but I can't. Nope. Because I got a little fucking scrubble and gauges. And yeah. And you know, because I look how I look, you know, fuck that. So anyway, like, so, but the point is that wasn't an option for me. Couldn't get that job. So it was like, fuck. So now like we're, we're in like December, 2013, January, 2014 here. And I can't, I can't, I have to face the facts that if, if I want that, if I want a job, I have to what's the word like sat give up i have to i have to become who they want me to be i don't want to become conform you have to conform yeah i like mm, i mean you've known me long enough that's that's a problem for me so i was like okay that's not an option so i was just and i was just dumb and naive but actually bold maybe as well i was like all right well i'll start my own fucking gym i'll start my own gym i didn't know shit i was i am not a business person Okay. Like I'm not a, I'm not a money driven person. I'm not a dude. I get anxiety having to sign my name. I do not do paperwork. I, Stacy makes fun of me for it all the time. Um, I'm like not, just in jail, like anything. Yeah, like I'm just, not an, I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not like, I, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I wanted to be a fucking soldier. Okay. I right? wanted to be a fucking soldier and that's it. But I fucking had to find a way, you right. know, I had to find a new path. Um, so you decided to open up a gym or, or pursue opening up a gym yeah. at that mm-hmm. point. So, so at that point you can't get hired. They're like, go fuck yourself. I could get hired. I was just unwilling to. Yeah, but no, that's, this is, this is, that's what, still, you can't get hired. Yeah. You're not willing to yeah. make those sacrifices. Yeah. Then and you're this not is actually a big part of the next story. Right. Next part of the story as well. So yeah. Okay. So it's 2014. I decide I'm going to open a gym. You know, Derek fucking Whiteout, nobody motherfucker living in Oakdale, Minnesota is going to open a gym. God damn right. Let's do it. (laughs) Yeah. And so, and, and at the time, and I was, I was still, I always, I always will be, but especially at that time, I was still big in, um, my brain was very military focused, very veteran focused, Mm -hmm. things like that, you know? And it wasn't a fucking marketing ploy. It wasn't, it was pure. It was true. I was, I, I was like, okay, if I'm going to open a gym, I want it to be fucking run by vets. Right. I want it to cater towards veterans. I want it to be a place in the community for veterans to hang out. Cause you know, so like when I got medically retired, they fucking it. And it's, I'm not talking shit. No, what, no, what year was that? 2009 was medically retired, medically retired in 2009. Okay. Yeah. And no discredit to the military, not talking shit about anything, but like I got, I got sent home with nothing. Yeah. No, they changed nothing. a lot of stuff. And I see, after that. and I, and I would, I would be at home and I'd see on the news and like this, this one wounded guy got a fucking truck and a fucking house and fucking mad money and all this shit. Like I, it took a I, long time I, for all that to spool up. Somehow I fucking fell through. Yeah. 
with 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 not much right you know <laughs> like i didn't get a house i didn't get a vehicle and that's fine like you know it's fine but i was i was like you know but i but i you know i'm not going to name names but i was like for every person like this there's got to be like 10,000 people out there who are struggling a lot. like i did like yep. i did between 2008 and 2011 there's there's i fucking i'm the majority i yes. was the majority 100% okay and so that was i was like if i'm going to open a gym like make a new place in the community. So that was, I was like, okay, I've decided I'm going to open a gym. And all of a sudden I'm in the fucking owning your own business world. In the goddamn gym like, business. What the fuck? You know? And so actually it's funny, man. Um, so how far into the process did you get? So like you decided to open up a gym. Did you like get space and equipment yeah, so, and everything? So it's like, okay, I'm going to open up a gym. Ah, uh, shit. I don't have any fucking money. Uh, how do we one. get money? Okay, so crowdfunding Done. was new back then. Right. And I started a crowdfunding campaign. It wasn't GoFundMe. I can't remember the name. Of it's the like there were like three OG ones back yeah, then. Yeah, but it was one of the, I can't, re I really can't remember the name. But anyways, I started a crowdfunding campaign and I just put it out there. And I didn't have Instagram at the time. I didn't have a public Facebook at the time. I just had my personal Facebook page. With I was like friends, friends, people who like, you actually like know, actual friends and family. That's it. Like I wasn't, I didn't. I you was, had my Facebook. Yeah. Is what yeah. You had. Like I was just a fucking <laughs> ordinary. It was just an ordinary person. I'm still an ordinary guy in real life, but like, you know, I haven't, I have a business on the internet now. Right. But back then I had nothing. Right. Nothing and no one. Right. You know? And, uh, but I was like, Hey, I started this, uh, fucking, uh, crowdfunding, uh, thing, which is actually, um, it would, the idea to do that was my sister's boyfriend at the time. I have to say like, they're not, you know, they, uh, my sister had a boyfriend for like nine or 10 years and they, they went their own separate ways, but he was a musician. Mm -hmm. And so Kickstarter was one of the OGs. Oh yeah. And he yeah, said, yeah. he said, this is how artists raise money. You can't do this here, but maybe this is an option for you. So for real, oh, cause oh, do this reminds. So like when I decided I was going to open a gym, I started calling people right. who ran their own businesses and things like that. And there was a program in Minnesota called score yeah, and it's a, which uh, still exists. It's part of the Small Business Administration. It's everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere. So I was going to score yeah. meetings, and I was yeah. just like, and they're like, what are you trying to do? I was like, open a gym. They're like, you're going to fail. I was like, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> real but, quick, but was, real was, quick about score. If anyone else is in the same situation, score is the first place that you should actually turn to, mm -hmm. to try and find out information about how to start whatever business it is you're trying to start. Yeah. Like, I didn't do it. I didn't know it was, it's a national thing. Yep. Oh shit. Small yeah. business administration does yeah. the score. So I was, Oh no shit. Yeah. So I was, I was going to, I you was, were doing exactly <laughs> what you're supposed to do <laughs> yeah. as a fucking but startup. It was, it's fucking weird. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you just go learn about these things. And uh -huh. so, but so anyways, to, um, so I, I did the crowdfunding thing, dude. And, it, and for some reason it fucking picked up, you know, like, so 2009 I, yeah. would be back when like you could still get organic reach with social media. So I'm imagining like you posted this, this thing up there and your friends shared it and then people actually saw it and it got out. So, to, but I posted this in 2014. Oh, okay. 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 We're, okay. we're in 2014. Yep. 2014. You know? I and, forgot uh, where we were. Or when yep. we were, and I posted this uh, 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 fundraiser, yeah, to start a gym, and like like it just took like and it took off, and I got on all the local news channels like Fox and ABC and CBS and all that shit. They're coming right. to my apartment and they're interviewing me. They're asking me to tell my story and my goal and things like that. And right. like, you know, like again, like this, not like my vision for the gym wasn't a marketing ploy. It was pure. It was true. Yeah. It's how I felt. It's what I wanted to do. I had a fucking, I was dedicated at the time to fucking, you know, uh, serving the veteran community. Right. I really was. It was genuine. I was, I was so, and so doing all these things, got on the news, things like that. In the end, we ended up, I ended up raising $15,000, which is good. Right. It's very good for is like enough to fucking nobody, nothing, shit like that. It's is very good, dude. People is it very, enough to start a gym? Fuck no. Not even close. No, but I was going to do it anyways. <laughs> I didn't give a shit, dude. I was fucking like, you know, I was making good contacts yeah. in and around town. So in the end, it's like, yes. So I was like location shopping. I found a really cool location. So I was up in Minnesota. And so between St. Paul and Minneapolis, 
there's a light rail and a main highway. And I found like a cool warehouse spot right. that was two blocks from a light rail stop. Yeah. And it was a, I found a cool warehouse location. All right. And I was like, cool. Fuck. Yeah. And the real estate person was like, who are you? What is your business? I was like, I don't have one yet, but here's my fucking goal. I had a vision. It was a super cool spot, man. Right. It was like, it wasn't two levels. It was, it was a warehouse warehouse, but there was like a bottom level and like a six foot high rise. And I thought like I'd put all the strength equipment up top and put like functional fitness. So this is even before I started doing CrossFit, Okay, CrossFit, CrossFit. Right. But I still did functional fitness back then. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and if you're going to start a business, if you don't do group classes, you're going to fucking die. Right. You know, and so fitness. I had a, I had a cool location picked out and things like that. I was going to borrow money looking into how to get all the money and things like that. So anyways, <laughs> At the score meeting, I found out I need to have an LLC. I was like, what the fuck is an LLC? They're like, oh, it's a fucking smoke screen. It's fake. It's bullshit. Dude, the business world still irritates the shit out of me. It's all fake. Now I have, what, fucking five LLCs. I got to change to an S Corp now. I'm going to be my own fucking employee. Don't get me started. Listen to you. <laughs> Dude, how am I going to be my own fucking employee? Easy. I am me. This world is weird, man. You can, you can pay yourself. Yeah. But anyway, so I, I, I go to the, I'm walking out of the secretary of state office yep. and, and I have my LLC in my hand and I got a phone call and my dad called me and he said, Hey, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to name his name. I'm not going to talk anything bad about this next part. I have no bad feelings about any of these people. Okay. Yep. My dad calls me. He says, Hey, a guy named Mark Daly just called you. He's from anytime fitness. Um, he wants you to give him a call back. Okay. So like, dude, like I knew of any, anytime fitness is a huge, yeah, they're nationwide. They're, f- they're, they're worldwide. 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 They're worldwide. They're a, it's a franchise gym. It's the keyless entry thing The they like anytime fitness and snap fitness exploded, especially during the recession. Right. Remember the recession, like 2007 to 2009, things like that. Yeah. The market crash. People couldn't, people were moving away from high amenity gyms right. and going to these, you know, anytime fitness was a lot cheaper. Yep. It was a lot easier. Um, so I got a call from, you know, my dad said, Hey, this guy named Mark Daly, um, from anytime fitness called. So I called Mark back and he said that, uh, one of the CEOs from anytime fitness saw me on the news and was interested in supporting me. I was like, oh, shit. Let me the, call this guy back. Oh, shit. Yeah. So I fucking well, like, yeah. So, um, you know, you know, fast forward a little bit. We set up a meeting. Uh, the guy, I'm just going to, I'm going to say his name because like, again, I have no fucking like things didn't work out between me and the, me and them. Long story short, things didn't work out, but I th- I'm, I'm at least more than half to blame, I think. And, and everything's good. So uh, the CEO, one of the CEOs name was Chuck Runyon. Super fucking cool guy, man. Um, Is he the one who came to the meeting? mm -hmm. Where was the meeting at? Mm -hmm. So our first meeting was in my apartment. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Mark Daly from Anytime Fitness calls me (laughs) and he says, you know, uh, Chuck wants to meet me and they want to support me in this fucking little uh, business endeavor I got going on. And uh, um, so... It's, it was weird, man. It was weird because I, I grew So all of a sudden I'm preparing for a meeting with a guy who has millions of dollars right. and a successful business. Right. And I have, I'm 26, 27 years old at this point. I've been poor my whole life. Not do you have any, like, do you have not any like, friends with millions at this point? What's do that? You, do you know anybody with millions? Like now? No, oh, no, no, no. Back, no. Then? back then? Fuck no, dude. Because that's Fuck a weird no. thing when yeah. like your first, in, like to, yeah. to be like, having a meeting with somebody who's at that position, having not even ever like mm-hmm. had a friend or a relative or anybody who's at that level. Yeah, no, like. It's nerve wracking. I didn't, I didn't like, uh, when I say I grow up poor, I don't mean to like, we, we, I always had food. I always had shelter. I always had water. Right. I, you know, but you like. You living in your station wagon. Like, but I was like definitely overdrafted my bank account always. Yeah. For most of my twenties, you know, and, uh, again, like my parents bailing me out and things like that, not like large sums of money or anything. And they're bailing me out and they're like, how the fuck are we going to bail out our fucking kid? Cause we don't have any fucking money again. <laughs> yeah. Again, you know, so, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Derek. Yeah. But, the, but the, like my parents saw that I was trying, right. You know? So anyways, yeah, I was preparing for a meeting with this guy who has 
millions of dollars and a fucking worldwide business. I'm like, what the fuck? He's coming to my apartment. He's going to expect dude, it was hors like, It was like snacks. the fucking humble peasant bringing right. in the king. You Would know, you like, like some bread, oh, sir? Dude, I was like, what the fuck? So, but anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Can I get you a beer? And I, But I still, I still pulled a Derek. What'd you do? I pulled a Derek, man. Um, so, uh, the, you know, all, all I really knew was anytime fitness was wanting to support my project, my, okay. my goal here in right. opening up a gym, but I had a specific vision for my gym and that specific, specific vision was not an anytime fitness. Okay. And, um, uh, so I, God, dude, this is bold and brazen. I don't, I, I had the, the right, I wanted to work with them and I wanted to see my vision come to reality. Okay. So I came up with a compromise. And so it's like, looking back, it's weird because I should have, I don't know, like part of me thinks I should have not, not, not bowed down, but whatever this guy said I would do or something like that. But that's not how it went down. I had, I had my own vision. I came up with a compromise. I had this idea called the anytime fitness rally point. Okay. It would be a signature series of anytime fitness gyms. So, you know, uh, Chuck comes to my apartment. He's super cool. Super fucking, he wasn't, he was just another guy. Yep. That was the first time I learned that millionaires are just people They're just too. dudes. But some of them aren't. But so, but Chuck was just, you know, <laughs> dude, like I, we were, I was embarrassed because I had a fucking shitty ass little tiny apartment. Some you pets. Know? It's uh, not, well, you don't have pets. So there's <laughs> yeah. no pet stains on the carpet. Like, but yeah, right. It was like, you know, we, weren't put we, away. Have, we have nothing to offer him right? and stuff like that. But anyways, he, it, long story <laughs> short, he sits down and I was like, hey, and we get talking. We, we're, we're talking business. He's like, what's your vision? I was like, here's my vision. And I, and, I, and I remember I told him, I told him straight up. I was like, hey, somebody like me would never work out at your gym because like they have a different model. They, they're, they're. We're veterans, man. Like we fucking, we like to get naked. We like to yell. We like to sweat. We say fucking shit ass, tit fuck, pussy, fart, dick hole, things like that. Okay. All like of those. we're, we're awful people and good people at the same time. Okay. Like <laughs> we're the worst. We're the fucking worst, you know, but we're also, um, selfless and we've sacrificed a lot for the country we love. Okay. Right. Like while saying pussy fart and making bad baby jokes. A little bit of a... <laughs> <laughs> Six cents of humor because of it all. <laughs> mm -hmm. You ever caught so, somebody's face like when you're talking with another vet and you're like, you kind of drop your guard and you'd like start talking to them. And then you remember that there's other people standing around and caught like some of the looks on people's faces overhearing your conversation. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Owen, I'm me. <laughs> I don't have to be with other veterans to fucking just make <laughs> to a get scene. That look. Good yeah. point. Uh, Stacy's always like, point. Derek, you're talking too loud. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> no. But so, you know, so anyways, I had a, had a, had a sit down meeting with Chuck Runyon there um, for many time fitness. And he's like, I really, I, I love what you're doing. I want to support you. And it wasn't a me thing. He fucking wanted to support. They wanted to support the veteran community as well. Right. Their intentions were pure. Um, so this was January, 2014. They fucking, they wanted to make this work. Okay. And dude, it was, it was cool. I got a lot of really cool experience. So, um, they were like, we want to, we want to help you. We want to make this work. We don't know how yet we're going to work on figuring it out while they were working on figuring it out. And by this, they, they wanted to build me a gym, right? They wanted to build me a fucking gym, Yeah, you know? And they, they liked my compromise idea. Um, I, the, and I don't want to say it was, everything was my idea, but like this, like my memory and things like that. Like right, right. I pitched something and we came to turn. hashed out what we had what it a shared like. idea. Yep. Somehow maybe some was theirs. Maybe some was mine. We had a shared idea okay. and they wanted to support me and they wanted to support the veteran community locally in Minnesota. And then they wanted to take it nationally. Right. They believe they cared. They're good fucking people. Right. All right. And so in the meantime, while they were trying to figure it out, they sent me around the country and I got to spend a week at a time in a couple different locations with some of their most successful business owners. So anytime fitness is a franchise yeah, and they fucking followed the franchise model and you like franchises are the way to get rich in America. Like McDonald's fucking set the precedent and fran like anytime fitness has a built a great fucking franchise. I know nothing about franchises. Really? 
Well, I mean, I know what they are and how oh, they're dude, set up Dude, I was and meeting with the but... fucking dude who started. I uh, saw, so, you know, meeting fucking people who were behind the scenes on the board of the people who started sports clips. Yeah. Schlotzkys. Yeah, yeah. All this shit. Yeah. So, like, I got to travel uh, the country and I was spending a week at a time with some of Anytime Fitness's best or, you know, like top performing, top performing, right. like they had the most gyms, they were bringing in the most money. It's like, how do they do things? Right. Cause anytime fitness didn't want to just like give me a gym and say, here you go, kid. Good luck, motherfucker. Here, yeah. They wanted to fucking give me they, and so I, you know, they wanted to give me the education and knowledge. Right. Like, here's what you're getting into. Cool. I was like, oh shit. Motherfucking employees, payroll. Yeah. What the fuck. So you flew around to how many? Training. Like five um, or six? I think three. 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 Yeah. Mm hmm. And then what? So you meet, you fly back and meet with them. So, I, you know, so I fucking, oh, dude, it's such a weird, it was a cool year. 2014 was a cool year. It turned out to be nothing, but, um, uh, I remember I was, you know, I went to Lafayette, Louisiana and I hung out with Bobby Hines. I believe that's his name. I went to fucking, uh, the East coast for a couple trips and actually, so anytime fitness, they're a fucking huge company and they have an annual company meeting or retreat or whatever the fuck you call it. Right. I was a speaker. It was a real thing. I was, it was a real thing. We had this vision. Everything was going good until it wasn't. So maybe, so like, I remember it was January, 2014 when I got the call from my dad saying Mark day, they called, I think like June, July was about their fucking annual conference. That's what it's called, you know? And, and things just weren't working out locations were hard to find because every fucking like anytime fit every every for everywhere and anytime fitness is they have like a three to five mile you can't fucking encroach on their territory right turf war shit right and anytime fitness is based out of minnesota i lived in minnesota horrible fucking place to try to start one of those gyms because there's already so their work they're talking to other owners and i fucking things didn't work out between me and them but i fucking i i, I believe that they did their best. They right. did everything they could and it just wasn't working out logistically. And it, it actually, so it wasn't working out logistically. Where were we going, where were we going to open this gym? How, how would we do it? Things like that. And so <laughs> dude, to their dude, like their, to their credit, I, sometimes I think I ruined this for the worst. Like it was my fault for walking away. I walked away for the right reasons and things like that, but they had my best interests and the veteran community's best interests in mind. Um, cause so things weren't working out with opening my gym and I was like, I'm not making any fucking money here, guys. Like I'm living off my disability. I'm broke. Mm -hmm. I'm broke. I'm, I'm fucking broke. Okay. Like we need to get things going. And so they offered me, they offered, they had a, they had like a flagship gym. It was, it was like Invergrove Heights, Minnesota. I think it was wherever it was. They had a flagship gym and they were going to give me the position of like the manager of that yep. gym. So like I owned that gym slash didn't own it. So my big thing was like, my big thing is always autonomy. I want to be in charge of me and, and my vision and things like that. So, but like their offering was, I be the manager of kind of like their flagship corporate gym in Minnesota. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay. Cause the salary was pretty good. It was like 5k. And then, and they also wanted to start a nonprofit and they wanted me to run the nonprofit for them, which was part of my idea too, to like have a business, but also get veterans free memberships and things like that. So I'm looking at maybe like seven or 8k a month salary. Right. At the time that was the offer as best I can remember. It's pretty fucking close. Um, and so I, I started like in, I started integrating into taking over management of this gym. And right away it was like civilian gossip. The employees were like, Oh, Derek's going to fire all of us because we're not veterans. It was fucking, it was annoying, dude. It fucking annoyed the shit out of me. Yeah. It fucking annoyed me. One thing I hate is gossip and bullshit and things like that. And the corporate world does not work for me. Okay. Like putting me in that position doesn't work for me. Cause that was the corporate corporate gym, right? V like corporate corporate gym. It doesn't work for me. And it was like, now we're in November, 2014. And I, I just, I, I remember I called Chuck one day and I was scared shitless. I was scared shitless, but I called him and I said like, Hey man, I'm out. I'm out. Like at this point, you know, cause like there had been several things along the way where I felt like I had compromised not myself, but my mission and my right. mission at the time was to create this place 
for veterans. Right. And now you're doing something different, managing something that already existed and you're not yeah. building your and own it's just thing. Like this isn't, this is like, I felt like I would, if I would have, ex, if I would have continued moving forward, I, f- I remember I felt whether it was right or wrong, whether it was true or not, I felt like I was betraying the community that I had been saying I would support. You know, because through all this time I'm on social, I'm on Facebook, you know, I'm saying we're going to do these things. We're, we're doing all these promotional videos. I'm saying I'm going to, I'm going to do my part to help support the veteran community and things like that. Right. And just at, in the end. And, but like, so my mistake was like, this was just the, the, the giving me that position was just a temporary fucking fix. Right. While like it was to get me working, get me, get me paid yep. while we figured it out. And I, but I just, I just, at that point in November, 2014, personally, I just felt like I had conceded too much mm-hmm. and I felt like I was, I felt like I was betraying the veteran community, whether I was or not, I'd, I could be, I could be very wrong. Cause again, like these guys were fucking great. They treated me with, with like more respect than I deserved. They gave me more opportunity than I deserved. They were fucking awesome. But anyways, I walked away. Yep. I walked away from a fucking sweet deal. I was like, I'm still poor. And I'm just like, got, you got these millionaires. Yeah, but it wasn't what you wanted. me all this shit. And I'm like, Hey, I can't. My wasn't integrity. What you wanted. Yeah. It was like, you know, so, um, that's, that's, that's my story about that. A lot of people wouldn't do that. I, you know, I think a lot, I think I, I mean, I'm, this is, just I don't know punch. if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a great thing. I, you gotta but, be, you gotta be true to yourself. You had, you yeah. had a vision of what you wanted to do. It, it turned out that it wasn't actually a great, a, a match for the direction that you wanted to be going. And but like, maybe I recognize Maybe that. I didn't have the patience. Eh. Maybe, maybe I, I, I'm, 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 I'm still okay. Like, so I do, I do remember like one of the negative things is like, I did get a fucking phone call one day asking me to not say fuck on social media. Yeah. I was like, oof. Yeah. That oof, ain't going to work. Oof. Yeah. Do you not know do who veterans know are? Who the fuck you I am? say you want to support veterans and try to fucking censor them from swearing. Right. Like, I mean, maybe some veterans, but not fucking infantry guys. Okay. Like you, you fucking go to war. You come back saying fuck shit ass tick dick. I can't fart, even help it. Pussy it just fart, comes Okay. Out. Like, yeah. Like fuck. I swear a lot you actually. Do. So for one of, uh, I'm going to make, I, I, it was an idea I had today. I, I'm going to make you do some work. It's going to suck. Ugh. But when one of these podcasts, the promotional video, I just want you to go through and pull out every time I say fuck or fucking or fucker. And so it's just a fucking minute long of me going, fuck, fuck, fucking of fucker, the podcast? fuck, fuck. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so that's our promo video. But Perfect. anyways, yeah. So long story short, um, and I, I don't mean to fucking talk any kind of shit, but like I, I, I walked away from that deal. It was a sweet ass deal, dude. From like, I was a, I was a poor broke motherfucker. I had this sweet ass deal from this worldwide fuck. It was a, it was a sweet deal. And they meant, they, they, they wanted the best. Mm-hmm. They, they wanted it to work. I wanted it to work. It didn't work. That's all right. But I walked away <laughs> and it was like late November, 2014. And, and all of a sudden everything I'd been working on all year is gone. And now I'm just fucking got nothing again. Nothing's changed. Nothing. Though. It yeah, was the right. same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you didn't but, lose anything. Nope. It's just what you, the direction you thought you were going mm-hmm. is not the direction you kept going in. So, so what'd you do? Um, I fired up a public Facebook account. <laughs> that's what i, I did like, what anybody would do well nice. so so <laughs> also so in 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 2014 there i started gaining internet traction okay um and i fucking uh i actually in in like i think mid 2014 i saw a friend of mine jared taylor on the internet doing funny videos. And so Jared Taylor and I served together in Iraq in 2007. Okay. And here he was doing funny videos and, and I reached out to him. I was like, dude, fucking like, what do you got? Like, that's, that's a funny video you just made. Looks really fun. So, so, you know, I think uh, late summer, early fall, 2014 is when I, is when I met the guys from article 15. Okay. So we're talking, Fucking Matt Best, Jared Taylor, Rocco, they like, and they were fucking, they were on the coming up, and they were coming up hard. Yeah, like they and they fucking have owned the space since. Yep. You know? <laughs> like, but those were the come up years, you know. So I, I, I made friends with those guys. I wasn't really working with those guys, but you know, so I understood. Where, where were they? El Paso, Texas. They were in El Paso. Okay. El Paso, Texas. Yeah. And so, so it was late twenty, late November twenty fourteen. 
I just, you know, everything has gone to shit and I don't know what to do, but I know I'm fucking broke. I know I'm poor. And I was just like, I got to make money. I was like, well, shit. Okay. I'm going to fire up a fucking apparel business, you know? And it's like, but still, what's my thing? Like fitness. So we started straight legless and, you know, I, I've through all this time, I was like, I want to be a gym owner, things like that. I've been posting about fitness and doing fitness things and things like that. So, you know, I started a f- public Facebook account, January 2015. And that the goal, the entire goal, for the, like the reason I started that Facebook page yep. was to make money. So still to this day, if somebody calls me a sellout for trying to make a buck on Facebook, it's like, that's why I started the Facebook page. The whole purpose I'm fucking was to make some dollars. Poor. It was like, but also help people and be involved. Like there's all the good things that go with it too. But you know, at the end of the day, I needed a fucking, you can earn an income. You can be helpful and make money yeah. at the same time. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, <laughs> I needed to earn an income just like can. fucking everybody else, you know? And you know, like, so I was, I was doing that. I was putting out funny, I was making funny videos. I was, that was, I was, cause Matt and those guys were making these funny videos and I was like, Oh shit, dude. I've always been kind of an entertainer at heart and things like that. And I like the oh, camera. Oh my God, dude, you should, I wish. So I, I, I deleted all the videos I posted on Facebook in like 2008 and nine and 10. But I was like, I was doing videography back then mm-hmm. and I was always drunk and it was weird and I was playing music <laughs> and I was so ashamed and embarrassed of it that I deleted it all. But I wish I still fucking had it. Yeah. Oh, you, you know? don't even have them like on a computer somewhere? No. Mm-mm. It's just uh. gone, dude. But it, like there was some, then there's a few people, there's a few people uh, who remember in my it? life who remember that. Yeah. <laughs> we remember that phase, Derek. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> So 2015, you know, we started making funny videos or like, I, like we started making videos, whether they are funny or not is subjective. <laughs> <laughs> we thought they were funny. Yeah. And you know, like we were, um, so it was like, all right, fuck it. I'm on my own. I'm on my own. That like that shit didn't work out. I'm on my own. And so my goal, my, my, my entire goal was starting the social media and starting the businesses was to fucking bring in money mm-hmm. to save for opening a gym by myself. It's like, I don't, I can't, I can't, I can't do this with, a, I don't want a business loan. I don't want investors. I don't want anybody else. Okay. And so like, and actually, t- so this is like five years later, still my end goal. But, you know, we haven't been, like, crushing it or anything like that. We've, we've been making decent money, compared, like, great money compared to what I used to. But I, it's not enough to open a gym and think. But that's my end goal. My end goal is it's still, still to open up a gym. Still to open up a gym, you know? Yeah. I, because I, I have this love-hate relationship with social media. I have this love-hate relationship with helping people on the Internet. Like, I I, 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 I love it. I, I fucking love helping people. I love giving people all my time. I, I hate it because I feel like I'm responsible to give people all my time all the time. I hate it because I feel like sometimes I get lumped into, um, a category of people that I don't like, you know, things like that. But, um, you know, so, but that's, it kicked off in January, 2015. And in June, 2015 is when the video came out of, uh, losing weight with Derek Whiteah. That's oh, what, yes. that's, that's what put me on the map. That's the one. That's the one. And actually, so, so like, before the release of that video, where, where was your social media as far as like size or size of following? And it was mostly on Facebook, right? Poor. Um, so yeah. So, but actually, so, you know, so I started social media January, 2015, Okay. April, 2015, I got signed on with first form. Okay. I fucking got a, I got a fucking athlete. I, I, I became a sponsored athlete. Yep. Because, you know, like I remember, I, I think on Instagram at the time I had 3000 followers and on Facebook I had grown like 24,000 followers. Okay. I started a Facebook, yep. public Facebook page, right, right. 24,000 followers. We was, we were doing our thing. We were putting out content. Um, first form was doing a sponsored athlete search. I entered into that. I won. I signed with them in April. I'm still with them. Right. You know, like I've been with them since day one. So like, Oh dude, like this love hate relationship with social media. I talk about like people fucking, if I post today about a supplement, people are like, you're a fucking sellout. Like I've been with these people for five fucking years. Right. I believe in them. They believed in me before I had a fucking name. Right. Okay. 
<laughs> you don't get how fucking true this is. But anyways, <laughs> so yeah, so so um, June 2015, the we released the video, um, how to lose weight with Derek Wyda. And do you, you want to hear a funny story about that? Yeah, fucking video. So at the time. We were just doing fucking bullshit funny videos. They were stupid, dude. It was it was it was it was uh like sketch comedy. Okay. One clip is about something, the next clip is about something, the next clip is about something. A lot like it's, you know, I was, you know, I don't think I was stealing from Matt Best, but I was definitely like influenced by him right. and inspired by him. I we Matt and I I don't want to compare like he's he's very successful. He's done very good. I mm-hmm. think he's the epitome of what someone can or should achieve after military service, okay? Like I look up to Matt, but I think we have similar minds somewhat. You know, so like what he enjoyed doing, I also enjoyed doing and I was like, "Oh shit, I like doing that. Let me see what I can do." So we were just doing bullshit, funny, dumb shit. Yeah. But when I, you know, when I signed on with First Form and became a sponsored athlete, they're like, all right, now you have a responsibility to help and educate people. I was like, oh, ooh, fuck. I just wanted to make fun of everybody. You said the R word. Yeah, I was like, I'm just a piece of shit that likes to make fun of people. Yeah. So we tried to, I tried to do this video. I was like, okay, I need to fucking give out my pointers of how to lose weight, you know? And, uh, mm. we set out. On this task, just speak. No, keep going. No, speak. What? What's your answer? Like six, six minutes. Six minutes until what? An hour. Oh, perfect. Yeah. See, oh, and this is our show. <laughs> Don't give me fucking hand and arm signals for how many minutes we're at. Just uh, fucking say it. Yeah. No, that's perfect because we're about at the end here. All right. Yeah. So you know, uh, 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 this 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 fucking video that put me on the. We'll just say it put me on the map on the internet world, like I fucking hated it from the beginning. I hated it. I hate. So like, it's funny. So let's say, I think we released it like June 27th. Yeah. Let's say we released it June 27th. We recorded the first version June 1st. Okay. okay? Cause like, so I set out to make this video. It's like, how do I, how do I, how do I educate and entertain people at the same time. So this is because of first form that you're trying to put together something to do. Yeah. Okay. So instead of making fun of people all the time, they said, Hey Derek, why don't you fucking help some people out? I was okay. like, Oh shit. Yeah. Maybe okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll think about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was trying to teach people what I knew about health and fitness. Yep. In a video, right. but I didn't want it to be fucking boring, dude. Cause like all fucking health and fitness videos are boring as fucking shit. Right. All right. So, we tried to make it funny. So I, you know, like we did the first video, we fucking filmed it, we edited it. And I was like, this is awful. Like, this is awful. This is more, edu- dr- it was dry. Okay. It was, tr- it was like educational. Dude, the facts were there. Right. The fucking advice right, right. was there, but it just wasn't funny enough for me. Right. All right. And so we did it again. So like on one weekend, we filmed the video and I was like, fucking scratch all that shit. And the next weekend, we filmed the video and I'll, I'll, I'll give a shout out to my friend who was helping me at the time. His name was Von Lee long. It's a kid. It's a guy I went to fucking middle school and high school with Is he the doctor. He was. Yeah. So he's, <laughs> he's, he's doc. He's Dr. Brown in the video. He was my first. It was, it, that was the partnership back then. Yeah. Him and I set out on this course and then he ended up going, uh, he took a job and okay. he left yeah. once. Yeah. Once we made it, he left. But anyways, that's a him thing. Hey. Everybody makes their own fucking choices, right? right or wrong at the time. Things like that, you know? Um, so, but anyways, so we, we, we filmed ep, uh, version one. It was shit. I was like, I don't like it. So version two, I was wearing costumes and going over the top and trying to Too be funny. Much. I was like, this is fucking awful. This is worse than the first so one. Now, yeah. So now we're going on a th- the third week of this project. And I was like, I'm fucking done with this project. I'm fucking done. Let's just like, let's, let's record. (laughs) So I was like, I'm going to get drunk. We're going to record a video, whatever we fucking make out of it. We're going to put out. That's it. And I don't even want to look. It's just going to tank. It's going to be awful. Nobody's going to fucking like it. Nobody's going to give a shit. And I just want to ignore it so I can move on with my life. Right. And it ended up doing really well. It Yeah. And it ended up being like, (laughs) it's still my most producing video of all time people are like you're that fucking guy in the american flag apron i was like yeah i fucking hated that video 
<laughs> if we redid it, but like, so at the time, like we were learning videography. Like if right. I watch it today, like it's slow moving as shit. Yeah. You know, cut it faster um, and do this. Yeah. But like at the time, dude, you know, you always get better. It's a good yeah. thing that you don't know what you don't know. It's like, oh, this is what we would do better. So like, yeah. So June, 2015, that video went out there and, um, it just, you know, so ever since then, this is like, now I'm this fucking guy on the internet that talks health and fitness. I got no fucking credentials. None. Except a lifetime of fucking experience. I am not How a about fucking that doctor. Shit? <laughs> fitness isn't fucking hard, dude. <laughs> fitness isn't fucking hard. And like, so all, all of this, like I, I'm here on the internet today talking about fitness because I've loved fitness my entire fucking life. Yeah. All right. And I wanted to make it a fucking... Uh, a job I wanted to make, you know, I wanted to try to open a gym. Yep. It just, things took weird turns along the way. Life happens, you know? Um, but shit, dude, I, I'm very glad or I'm not upset about where I'm at. I'm not upset about where we're at. Right. And we fucking help thousands yeah. of people like thousands. That's fucking wild. That's dude. cool. Cause I'm one guy, right? I'm one guy. You know, like, and I'm who turned down a job in Minnesota <laughs> yeah. and now lives in Vegas yeah. and hands out you know? free fucking uh, yeah. internet advice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm one guy and sometimes I get overwhelmed. Like I said, with like the responsibility and things like that. But I always, I always, I'll just, I'll just, we'll, we'll finish with this. Like in all this shit. I, so I've been doing internet things for five years, you know, it's like, make, like this is my business now. Right. And it, it, it's, it's slash business slash diary slash let's have fun slash. Let me help people. Right. Like I, 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 I like my main fucking priority with my social media is to make people laugh, laugh with them. I use it for me too. And, 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 and help them out. But I also, this is what pays our mortgage. This yeah. is what pays for our food. This is my job. Right. Because other things didn't fucking pan out because life is fucking weird and you have to fucking adapt or die. Right. Adapt or die. I love dude. that. <laughs> adapt or, and then like I, you adapt or die. You At totally no point do. do you fucking give up. Nope. At no fucking point do you fucking quit. You fucking adapt or die. Yeah. You roll with that shit. All right. So, um, and that's, that's what has led me here. It's fucking 2020 and I'm doing internet things. And, and now actually, so like, you know, and it's, uh, now things are going kind of well enough for the first time, the last few months, so things are going well enough where I think maybe opening, opening a gym using my own money will actually be a reality in the next two to four three, five years. Yeah. Say five, like, That's I a think, good five year I th- plan. I think it could be a reality because it takes a lot of money to open a gym. Yeah. You know, and you know, along the way, it's like, that's my goal, but I never forget. So I always fucking, it's easy to get caught up in the large numbers. It's easy to get caught up like, Oh, I got 500,000 followers on Instagram. I got 700,000 on Facebook. I make, you know, I, I need to make this much money to fucking do this or that or that. It's, I always fucking remember I get overwhelmed by that shit. It makes me very sad and depressed. I always remember if I help one person, how is that not a fucking beautiful thing? Right. Just one person. If you change one person's life forever, that's a beautiful thing, man. Like that's if, if you, if you save a life like one, once a month or, you know, like once a day or something like that, or if you make somebody's one person's day better, you, I've, I've succeeded yeah. in my fucking mission. Did something good today. Yeah. It's like, it's fuck, like, fuck sales, fuck money in. Yep. If I, if I made one person's day better. Yeah. Success, yeah. you know? So I always, I always, I, it's easy to get caught up in all this shit. The internet's a weird place to do business, man. It's, and it's a dangerous place to do business. It'll fucking, it'll make your ego fucking go through the roof and things like that. And you have to fucking dial it back. Right. And, and like, I think, I think I got lost there. I think 2015, 16, I got, I got carried away. I thought I was important. Right. You know, or like, I thought I was somebody, I thought I was important. And then I met Stacy and she was like, <laughs> guess what motherfucker? You're not shit. And I was like, no, she didn't say that. Like, obviously <laughs> Stacy likes me and thinks highly of me, but she really fucking, grounded me. Yeah. She really grounded me. And actually I want to, so, you know, we, we shared the savage slapper of the week. There was a book I, I listened to on audio tape when I drove out. So I was living in El Paso when I met Stacy and I was, and I was 
she took a job here in Las Vegas. So on my drive out here, I listened to an audio book called Ego is the Enemy. I can't fucking think of the author. I know it's, I know the book is here somewhere. Ego is the enemy. I'll look it up real quick yeah. while you talk. Ego is the enemy. I, I listened to the right book at the right fucking time. Timing is cool like that. Oh my God, dude. I listen to everything the, sometimes. I, I, I met Stacy and she fucking humbled the shit out of me. Ryan holiday. Yeah. Ryan holiday. Ego is the enemy. Ego is Ryan the enemy. Holiday. So, at, you know, so like 2015, 2016, I was, I was coming up on the internet and I, not to, I, I'm not being harsh on myself. It is what it is. Like I'm human, man, you know? So <laughs> it's like, but you, that ego just builds. You're like, I'm popular. I'm famous. People should know who I am. Right. I should get special treatment. I was never that bad, but it was, it was in my head, yep. you know? And, um, Stacy, she didn't, it's not that Stacy reminded me that I wasn't Stacy reminded me what's important in life, mm -hmm. love connection, you know, I was like, oh shit, real true feelings, yeah, things like that. And, um, on, on, you know, and so when I met her, we were in El Paso and she took a job in Las Vegas and I listened to this book, ego is the enemy. It was, it was July, 2016 that I met, you know, I was, I was coming out here to live with Stacy and I listened to this book and it really fucking, it changed my life and it set me on the right course. It humbled me. It reminded me that I'm not important. Mm -hmm. Everybody's important, but right. you're also I not know what important. You mean. Right. And that fucking helping anybody anytime matters. And so however fucking good we do, awesome. Let's do the best we fucking can. Let's try our yeah. hardest. Let's, let's, let's help as many people as possible. Let's make as much money as possible. Um, but also never forget about the one person never forget. And so that's, that's, that's my story. That's my business story. Right on. <laughs> it's fucking took some weird fucking right? it's weird, huh? It's super you just, weird. You just fucking wake up one day. You're like, Hey, I don't know. I'll just like try this internet thing. The internet is not an easy place. No, you I, can't just, you can't just fucking decide to fucking, pay, you know, make your build a business on the internet and think you're going to succeed. It's a flooded fucking place. It takes way longer than people think. It's yeah. that whole iceberg mentality where they like, they see, you see just the tip and, but there's the whole, you know, the, the, the fucking motivational poster that people put on yeah. the, it's all the success and all the hard work and, and yeah. stuff underneath that you don't see. It took, yeah. took six years, six years. To, it to took do. longer than that. It took me, it took me five or six years to find my new purpose. Yeah. And then once, and that's the fucking like it, so if I got, if I got shot in 2007, if I got, you know, the medical board process started in late 2008, if I started this path in 2014, it took me five to six years to find my new purpose, Yeah, find a new purpose, That's you know? Hard. And so veterans write me today and things like that. Like, dude, I'm struggling to find a new way. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to, yep. okay. Don't fucking quit. Don't fucking quit. You don't fucking, you have no idea. Yeah. But, and so my big thing back then is like, I wanted to fucking kill myself. Guess what? You don't know what the future has in store for you. If you're not alive to find out, right? Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. Maybe it's very bad. Maybe, maybe you're going to be miserable for the rest of your life. Maybe it's a possibility. But maybe if, you if, won't. If you make those, if you, if you make poor choice after poor, poor choice, right. You know, and, and for two years I was making poor choices, Yeah. but I was always fucking struggling. I was, I was sad because I wanted more. I was sad because I wanted a better life. I, I kept fighting. I think, you know, like there was a lot of bad things that I did back then that I'm ashamed of and embarrassed of, but to my credit, I continued fighting. Yep. All right. Like fucking tooth and nail, dude. Right. Like just fighting, fighting to stay alive. And, and so that's what I've learned. And if my story is a testament to anything, it's like, you don't know what the future holds for you if you're not alive to find out. That's right. And now, like, and so when I was like, like those were desperate times, there was weird times. I had a different wife. Things didn't work out there. And, but now like, but now we're in, it's uh what? March, 2020. Yeah. I know. Married to Stacy, we got two fucking kids. We got a successful business going for us, and our successful business helps people. Yep. Modestly, we make every fucking dollar we make is honest as shit. Yep. <laughs> you know? Like, like life is cool. Life, is, and for a long time, I was hopeless and desperate, man. Hopeless and desperate, and but you just you, you don't quit. 
Try stuff. Yeah, you try stuff. It works out eventually. Yeah. But I, I but like I can't say that. It doesn't always work out. If if you're not fucking humble and modest, it won't work out. If you just go through it all forever with ego and thinking you're important, I, I see a lot of people because we're on the internet. I spend a lot of time on the internet. I see it a lot. I, just people who think they're too important yeah. for too long and they just don't make it because they don't give a shit about people, you know? And that's why, like, dude, it breaks my heart every time I get called a sellout or something like that because I, 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 I give a shit. I care so much about the people that follow me, about the people that ask me for help. I care so much. Um, I wish they knew that. They do. All right. They do now. They do now. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. I think that's uh, that's a Savage Saturday right there. That's a sappy Saturday. No, well, it's not sappy. It's a fucking dude. Like this, that was a we. I've I'm very proud. I'm very proud. Like there's been a lot of twists and turns along the road. You You just don't fucking quit. You don't give up. Things have a weird way of working themselves out. They do. It's been, and I'm, and uh, I love my life. That's, I think that's the main thing now. Like I love my life now. Like, yeah, we got fucking problems. There's always new challenges. Yeah. My life is great. Yeah. We, we bought a house. It's not a fucking mansion, but we bought a house. I have fucking kids that I love. I have a wife that I love. Yeah. And we live here. It's a beautiful thing, man. Don't give up. Follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. I think like, and stay true to yourself. That's it for us, guys. Good advice. Yeah. We love you. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next week. Cheers. Cheers.